Welcome back at 652. Time for your morning news now. The former deputy director of the Milwaukee Election Commission found guilty on three misdemeanor counts of election fraud and one felony count of misconduct in public office. Kimberly Zapata admitted requesting three military ballots under fake voter names and sending them to a state representative. Her attorneys argued she aimed to expose flaws in Wisconsin's electoral system as a whistleblower. Prosecutors told the jury to focus on her actions, not her intentions, stating she damaged the very system she was entrusted to safeguard. So what did she tell us? She told us that she fabricated three individuals for the purpose of having ballots issued. That she did this on her work laptop, the computer issued by the city. That she did this using the my vote, or the WIS vote system to gain the address that she had these ballots sent to. Zapata facing up to five years in prison and as much as $13,000 in fines. A sentencing hearing has been set for early May. Parts of the federal government could briefly shut down this weekend despite a bipartisan budget deal. The issue is time and whether the package can overcome hurdles by the end of the day tomorrow. Currently, it appears to have enough support to pass, but lawmakers who oppose the deal have ways to slow down the process. In the House, expediting with a suspension of the rules requires a supermajority. And in the Senate, a speedy unanimous consent vote fails if a single person objects. Winona State University has a new leader at its helm. The Minnesota State Colleges and Universities Board of Trustees is announcing Kenneth Jans will assume the role of president, effective immediately. Jans has been serving as interim president since August, following the departure of former president Scott Olson. This isn't Jans' first experience with the university. From 2008 till 2023, he held the positions of associate vice president for academic affairs and chief information officer. Have you ever dreamed of trading places with the conductor of the Lacrosse Symphony Orchestra? If so, now's your chance. The orchestra's annual conductor wannabe competition is back and they're looking for the next maestro. Contestants were announced yesterday, along with the nonprofits they'll be raising money for. It's up to you to vote for your favorite candidate. Each vote must be a minimum of $2. Those proceeds will be split between the candidate's chosen charity and the orchestra. As we all know in our community, we love collaborations and helping a lot of people all at the same time. It just makes it a lot more fun. The winner and runner-up who raised the most money will have the chance to make their conductor debuts at the symphony's May 4th concert. The competition starts today and runs until April 30th. The names of the wannabes and their charities are posted on our digital platforms. Rudy's Drive-In is back open for the season. The fence came down yesterday, marking the kickoff of the 91st season in La Crosse. You can expect the same products the Cooley region has come to know and love for decades. But there is a warning that it might take a little longer to get your treats because they are short-staffed. So if you know anybody that's good on a pair of roller skates, tell them Rudy's is needing the extra help. Temperatures this morning starting in the 20s, including 27 in La Crosse, 22 in Eau Claire. Uh, cloudy today, but mainly dry and still chilly. Highs in the upper 30s. Snow arrives tonight into tomorrow morning. Winter weather advisory for all areas. General one to four inch snowfall expected. Maybe some localized five to six inch totals, especially far south. Uh, light icing in spots as well, but a wintry Friday morning commute, so be prepared for that. Little break Saturday, more unsettled conditions Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Thank you, Bill. We'll take a look at this Roman statue dating back nearly 2,000 years ago was found by construction workers building a parking lot in the United Kingdom. A digger driver uncovered the marble head of a Roman lady at 16th century country estate in Peterborough last year. Two weeks later, a bust was found close to the site of the original find. The relics were then cleaned, examined and reassembled by a conservator. The sculpture was dated to the 1st or 2nd century. The estate said it's believed the 9th Earl bought the sculpture during his tours to Italy in the 1760s and brought it back. It said it's a mystery how the head and bust ended up where they did. Explanations range from a bungled burglary to someone discarding the statue, which later got covered by dirt. Thanks so much for starting your morning with us on News 8 Now this morning. We will see you back here at noon. Have a great day.